folks, Sean Broderick here again at the New Orleans Investment Conference. This time I'm talking to John McConnell of Victoria Gold. Now, Victoria Gold is an exciting story. Just back in 2020, they started production, and the, their production is ramping up high grade in the Yukon. Man, they have some exciting things going on. John's going to give you the scoop. John, could you please speak to my viewers? Sure. Uh, I don't know about high grade, but... Uh, What's the grade we, on the project? <laughs> about 0.75 grams per ton. Well, it's higher than some. But okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, you know, it's high grade for a heat bleach operation. Yeah, okay. A ton. So, you know, but this is a very large open pit uh, heat bleach. What really makes the economics work on it is, one, we have good infrastructure, and we have access to hydroelectric power. So we're tied into the Yukon Energy Grid, and we draw from a hydroelectric dam that's probably about 50 kilometers south of us. Plus, you have year-round access on the roads and like stuff like that. Yeah, right? we have. There's a road, full road, and you know, a paved highway within uh, 40 kilometers of the site. So, very good infrastructure. The community of Mayo is uh, just south of the project small community but has a full service airport mm -hmm. so our employees fly into uh, mail and then we bus them to site and so how much gold is uh victoria going to produce this year we'll be somewhere you know in the 160 to 170 thousand ounces this year uh, name plate for the plant is 200 thousand ounces per year um, one thing I would advise your viewers mm -hmm. is never start up a mine during a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, that's been a real challenge and it, it is real. You know, uh, at the beginning of COVID, people would have to, you know, come up to the Yukon. They'd have to self-isolate for two weeks in Whitehorse. Then they'd go to site, they'd work two weeks and then they'd go home. So it was, you know, a stressful time and, you know, a lot of, uh, jurisdictions actually got the mines to shut down. Yeah. Uh, we were fortunate. We worked with the Yukon government and came up with protocols that at least allowed us to keep operating. Good. So, and so now you're going to raise production this year, right? Yeah. So we've had some challenges, uh, you know, people, um, some equipment failures, but, uh, you know, we're confident we'll get up to the 200,000 ounce per year, which is nameplate, uh, over the course of the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really about crusher availability. And if I, you know, look at the crushing plant from the primary crusher through to our stacking conveyors, our overall mechanical availability is about 75%. Hmm. Now, it should be 85%. So, you know, I said 165,000 ounces this year. The difference between 165,000 ounces and 200,000 ounces is getting that availability from 75% up to 85%. Hmm. Now, there's some mechanical changes we can make. Um, and I can give you an example of one that we've done already is... Uh, you know, we had a large conveyor that moves the material from underneath the uh, tertiary crushers. Mm -hmm. Now, if in an upset condition we shut that conveyor down for whatever reason and it was fully loaded, we couldn't start it up again with the size of the motor that was there. Oh, no. And we'd have to have four guys shoveling for 12 hours, and then once it was empty, we could start it up again. Solution was, you know, uh, put a second drive at mm -hmm. the head end of the conveyor, and another 200 horsepower motor. Now it starts up fully loaded. You know, that was happening, say, 20 times a year, so you lost 10 days of stacking by making that one little change. Hmm. And then the other challenge is people. Um, you know, it was tough during COVID to get people to work in a remote mine, um, and we're still continuing to struggle to get people particularly at the labor end. Mm -hmm. You know, we always knew we'd be challenged for tradespeople and skilled labor, but we didn't think we'd have issues with unskilled labor. And those are the, you know, the young people you train to be crusher operators and yeah. work in the uh, plant. Um, but that's getting better. 
And as I said, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, millennials have been living in their parents' basements for mm -hmm. the last two years. And mom and dad are getting a little tired of it. And they're saying, <laughs> get out and get a job. <laughs> so um, speaking of things improving, you guys have a new discovery, don't you? Yeah, just out to the uh, east, about 15 kilometers, uh, we have a new discovery called Raven. Um, we discovered it in 2018. We had three seasons of limited exploration because of COVID. But we, in between 2019 and 2021, we drilled 18,000 meters in about 80 holes. And we just published the inaugural resource on that new discovery. It's over a million ounces and at double the grade of Eagle, so at 1.7 grams per ton. Um, so this year we went out there with a big program. We've already, we're still drilling, but we've already drilled over 25,000 meters in close to 100 holes. So we'll have a new resource update in the spring and, um, you know, we're certainly very excited about that mm. new discovery. You know, they always say the best place to look for a mine is in the shadow of your head frame. And, right, uh, right. That's essentially what we've done. Just to explain to my viewers, since it has twice the grade, that means you can move the same amount of ore and end up with twice as much gold. Isn't that right? That's correct. And it, it sits right on surface, so I would expect the strip ratios will be similar to Eagle mm -hmm. and very low at one to one. What's the resource you have now on Eagle? Resource, uh, you know, which was published in 29, we're updating it now, is just over 5 million ounces. So you already have plenty anyway, and yeah. you're, you're going to update that resource, I guess, uh, will it be by the end of this year or sometime next year? We're going to cut it off at the end of the year, mm -hmm. and it'll be out sometime in Q1 of uh, 2023. So we'll see a fresh resource from you then will that include anything from raven or no um raven will be a separate mm -hmm. technical report and a separate resource and i expect uh you know we'll get that out in q1 of next year as well excellent excellent okay um so uh, what other things can my viewers look forward to see coming from your company say between now and the middle of next year well, I think those are two big things, mm -hmm. the uh, Eagle resource update and, uh, you know, the Raven mm -hmm. new resource. But then, uh, you know, watch quarterly production numbers and uh, you'll see it slowly ticking up to the equivalent of 200,000 ounces per year. Great. What's your all-in sustaining cost at Eagle, by the way? Um, it's probably somewhere around 1,400 mm -hmm. this year. Um, but this has been a, a high sustaining capital year for us. We've had over 60 million in sustaining capital. And a big part of that was a once only uh, water treatment plant. Okay. So it drops off next year and, uh, you know, you know, if fuel prices get back closer to normal, we'll be down around 1,200 per ounce. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, I mean, you have had some, like, setbacks, but you have dealt with them and believe me i've been talking to people who've had worse like there's one ceo who was telling me he's trying to start a new mine and they can't get the trucks simply because there aren't the chips for the trucks oh, to yeah. uh, make them roll so everybody's having setbacks and yet you are dealing with them and and improving production finding a new higher grade resource so uh things seem to be going well i think right yeah, no, you know, you, you know, as the CEO, you always want things to go a little better. But, yeah. uh, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're making a lot of money for our shareholders right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're investing it back into the business in terms of exploration and increasing production rates. So speaking of investing, how much does Victoria own of the next door Banyan project? I think we own about 12.5% of Banyan. Okay, which uh, is remarkably similar to your project, at least it seems so far, with the yeah, geology no, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's very, very exciting. And the other thing we've done is uh, we own all the royalties. There mm -hmm. were royalties. Uh, Alexco had some royalties on it. And when they were having financial problems uh, 12 months ago, 
we were able to negotiate with them to buy those royalties off them as well. So. Excellent, excellent. Um, how much cash flow do you have per year? Um, well, you tell me what the gold price is going to be, and I'll tell you what the <laughs> cash flow is going to be. But, you know, it's somewhere between uh, 50 and $100 million Okay. of free cash flow. Free cash flow. Yeah. So, um, obviously, you won't have to go back to the markets for uh, anything. No, and happen. our focus is on paying back debt. Mm -hmm. you know, last year, we paid down uh, $60 million in debt. This year, it'll probably be closer to $40 million because of that water treatment plant mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. talked about. But, uh, you know, I'm a bit old-fashioned. I don't think my father ever had debt. You know, he never bought anything he couldn't pay cash for. That is so, pretty old-fashioned. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'd love to get the debt paid off. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. our goal is to do that by the end of 2023. Okay. Great. Um, let's give folks the uh, symbols. Uh, our symbol on the TSX is uh, VGCX. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> this is terrible, but uh, over the market in uh, the U.S., I can't remember what the symbol is. Don't worry, I'll just pop it in there. I think and it's VTIFF. It, yeah, and it's like OTCQX. So yeah, th um, we will... Uh, Check on that and make sure, because I want you folks to see what the right symbol is. I remember when this project was a dream that you had, you know? I mean, because I've been in this business long enough, and sure enough, you showed steady progress, and you delivered on everything, and now it's in production, and you're expanding and all that stuff. It's really, really great to see this kind of success uh, come to someone who's, like, worked so hard to actually do it. So congratulations on that. Um, that's about it uh, for... Um, this one, I'll have more for you from the New Orleans Investment Conference. Stay tuned. I'll have more for you.